am I still, yes, uh, still in slideshow. Okay, I'll just leave it up like this. So this is, yeah, about me, which Kareen covered really well. <laughs> so I'm uh, from Ireland. I live in North Yorkshire, but I work at Lancaster University. And when people ask me where what I do, I say I'm a maker. Um, that's only kind of something I've kind of admitted to in the last three, four years. Um, but I'm also a PhD student. And what I'm really interested in, which is gathering some kind of context today for my PhD, um, I've just started it. So I'm not at the stage where I'm ready to talk to people yet. So I'm still kind of reading, um, but my PhD is around physical computing. So I think the microbit has had huge success at secondary high school level and, uh, and younger. And I'd like to see, can we replicate that in higher education? So in university level, that's my university email. So it's l.underwood um, at lancaster.ac.uk. If anybody wants to get in touch, if you can kind of help me with my PhD or you're interested in my results. Um, you may remember me if you were at Microbit Live last year. This was my cube. So I made a one meter 3D cube um, at, and brought it to Microbit Live. That was its last event, <laughs> RIP, um, Cubert. It lit up um, individually, each each light lit up individually. And I'm gonna have to run this because it's emissions. That's kind of my theme is uh, lights as a maker. I make a lot of things with lights. Um, that was a Harry Potter sorting hat. These are my stairs. Um, those two were microbit. This was Raspberry Pi. Um, this was Arduino. And like I said, I've got a book. So I created a book this year, um, Save the World with Code. It's mostly microbit. I have to say the, the publisher did make me put in those other two devices, but it's mostly a, a book about microbit using very cheap accessories to learn how to code using different levels of uh, projects with so like easy, medium, hard. Um, and this year, uh, I've entered Pi Wars. We became six overall with our robot. Um, I've joined the Element 14 community, creating videos for them. Um, and this month, I'm in the Hackspace magazine. Where I created a talking face mask. So to the talk then. So introduction to make code. I feel um, that quite a lot of this was covered in yesterday's talk uh, that Pelly and Jackie did, uh, which is fantastic. The notes are up and the video is up soon as well. If you if you want to watch that, because they're the developers of Make Code, so they're kind of covering what's new and what's cool. Uh, what I'm covering is from an educator's point of view. So I I've taught a lot with Make Code, and I also teach teachers how to use Make Code, um, and I teach at lots of different levels. So I teach at a university level and um, kind of kindergarten, not kindergarten, that kind of level. Um, so I'm going to go through my top tips as, as an educator, uh, a demo of some of them, and hopefully we'll get time to chat a bit um, about what are your kind of top tips for make code. So my first one, and our, I never took any screenshots. I might escape this in a second, are comments. So you can add comments to blocks in make code or to the actual entire screen. And I feel like we, we miss out on this a lot as educators. So when it comes to teaching text-based languages, we're all about comments. You know, we're like, you need comments. You need to explain what your code is doing. And it's kind of like your workings in maths. You know, you can't just write the answer. You need to explain how you got to the answer. And we say that a lot in text-based coding, but we never mention it in block-based coding. It's something that just kind of we just don't mention, you know, and I think you can get a lot inside a kid's head if they can explain what they thought their code was going to do. So adding annotations uh, if they're younger, you know, just labeling things. But then when they're older, ha having a readable explanation, what is this bit of code doing? What do you think this bit of code is doing? And I think we can get a lot of understanding uh, from comments. It's also just how I say to the kids, it's a note to self. If you're going to come back to this, you know, your one IT lesson a week, you need to remember what this does. So it's just a basic, a basic note to self. Um, I don't know whether to go flip to show you the comments. Um, let me check the chat. What do you guys think? Do you want to see me demo comments or should I just keep going? If anybody wants to kind of say that in the chat. Do, do, do. No one's talking to me. I suppose there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a delay, isn't there? There is a one minute delay. Oh, a minute. <laughs> yeah. 
yes, yes, yes. You want me to demo the comments? Okay, great. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> so I'm going to share. Oops. Okay, sorry. Share my other screen then. Okay. Um, okay. Yep, yeah, great. So this is the live. Hmm. So like I said, we don't tend to do comments. So if I create, I'm just going to create a variable here called step. I'm going to, like any good program, I'm going to initiate my step. And then when I press A, I'm going to increase the step. Um, by one four times and this will come this will come into effect later on when we're doing a different one so this code's going to be useful so you what you can do is right click and add a comment um, and you want for kids to explain what does the entire program do so that's a comment for the whole screen but then you can add a comment to the block and it's up to you, like we tell the kids to comment their code. Obviously, you don't want to comment for every single block. So you could say just comment the outer block. You know, what does this do if it's if it's quite simple? Um, so you want them to add comments to their code. Uh, you can hide comments, you know, if, when you want to kind of just see the code, see the program on its own. And it's useful. You know, I think we definitely miss out on this when we're coding in blocks. We definitely forget that you can comment code. And I think it's it's a core part of learning to code is using comments. So back to my presentation. Debug mode. This is probably my favorite bit of uh, make code and it wasn't originally available. So you may have missed out on this one. Um, this is really cool. It's not always available in text based languages. So if you're just using a text editor to write some Python, this is not something that you can do. Um, so I would definitely use it while you can, you know, while you're a beginner. Do use it while you can, you know, while it's available to you. And then when you move on, do, 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 sorry, it's just like clicking a billion buttons. Right. So back on my make code, we have we have our debugger. So we can turn this on and the code is running. So when I press A, we can sn slow it down. So it shows you where it is. So it highlights, I'm pointing at the screen with my finger. <laughs> it highlights different parts of where the code is. So where was the code? What was it doing? And it shows you what all the variables are doing at the same time. I've never seen anything like this. You know, I code in Python, I code in C, and I've never seen anything as cool as this. This is so useful, especially the slowing it down. So if I refresh it then, so it's showing you at the start of the program, step is zero and forever is running, which is nice because then you can realize, oh, I actually don't need forever. I can delete that. Um, but when I press A, it shows you the index of your repeat loop and the step, the variable step as it changes. And this is fantastic. There's no other program that does this. So it's really good for younger children to see where the, what their code is doing, when it's doing and what their variables are doing. So the debug mode is super useful. Um, I was going to say something. In text based languages, you just do a lot of print statements. So when it, you know, when we move on to text, I say to them, oh, you know, we haven't got a debugger. What are we going to do? So they're, they'll have to figure out, you know, you need to print your variables here. Do you know what's happening? So you can see on the screen what's happening. It's a really crude way of doing it, but actually it's kind of like, that's how you do it in text-based languages. You don't have um, fancy debuggers like that. I'd love to know if you know a, a program that does do that. If you know a debugging program in a different language that does that, if you could share that, that'd be brilliant. Back to my presentation. I'm going to run out of time. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to skip libraries. I'm going to go to Snapshot because this is also one of my favorites, especially when I was writing my book. Um, it's great for student notes, teacher marking. Let me just go straight to the Snapshot. Um, I hope you guys aren't getting dizzy with all this moving around. <laughs> So this is back on the make code screen. Um, so snapshot is basically it takes a picture of where your code is. So we snapshot this in Chrome. It just downloads it straight away um, to the um, downloads folder. And what it does is it takes the snapshot. I'm not sure you can see that because it's probably just still sharing my make code screen. Um, it takes basically a picture of what exactly is there, including the comments which is fantastic. So you can use this for multiple ways. So you can use this for the students printing out their own notes at the end of the day, you know, if you need them to store them somewhere to take them home if they don't have the computer at home. For teacher marking, so if you want to, I know like we don't really want to print out lots of things, but sometimes you do. Sometimes you want to go to a cabin in the woods and not have any electricity. So you print out all their work and you go home and you mark it. You, mar you, you know, you mark the pieces of paper. Um, it's also good for teacher notes for handing out notes. So here is a loop and you annotate. This is the loop or this is part A of the program that I want you to look at. So snapshots are really good for that kind of stuff um, for adding into your PowerPoints as well. If you're doing presentations, you take a snapshot of your code, paste it into your PowerPoint and you can show the code, you know, without doing print screen. It's just a really nice, easy way of seeing your code. We've got five minutes then. I realize I should have just shared my entire screen rather than flipping between <laughs> applications. Oh, technology. Expand and collapse. Oh, yeah, this one I'm not so sure about. Cause, and then it's a libraries, and then I'm done. Okay, I'll go back to make code for the last time. So yeah, expand and collapse. So you can um, the, the, the collapse the block. So basically you're hiding all the code underneath it. So this can be great if you've got too much going on on the screen. You know, if you've got different programs running, so you've got like a, a program for button A, a program for button B, it makes it just easier, you know, when you're, when you're zoomed in and you really need to see stuff and you really need to show off stuff. Um, you can collapse things. I wouldn't recommend it for children because then you kind of forget that there's code here and you can end up thinking your program's doing something it's not, you know, you can end up in a real muddle. So I wouldn't use collapse for the children, maybe just for your own kind of tidiness. How, if like, if they find that they have to collapse it because it's going too long, maybe it's time they use functions, you know, maybe they need to split their code into different parts. So you can have um, a function which you can call whatever you want. So we can say increase step um, to say this button has like lots of different things in it. So you can then put that in this function here. So it's, it's good for separating code. So if you say to the, to the kid, you find the kids are shrinking their blocks. Um, you can ask them why are you shrinking that? Oh, because it's too long. Well, maybe you need to use a function then, you know, it's a good conversation starter. If they, if they are using it, maybe they need to not use it. <laughs> um, what was my last one? That was my last one, wasn't it? Oh, I was going to talk about libraries. Um, so you have these extensions. I wish they call them libraries because that's what's called a lot of text based languages. Um, like in C and in Python, they're called libraries. You know, you import a library, which is basically someone else's code that they've written. Um, this is my favorite. Uh, the NeoPixel library. So it lets you control NeoPixels and MakeCode has a fantastic um, simulator for this. So you set up your strip and then you color it in. And you'll see there on the left, it's added the strip to the left, which is fantastic. I wish they did more of these, you know, like LEDs, breadboards. That would be great to visually see them and see the wires even, you know. If they're not sure how to set it up, there's there's the actual wire. That is um, brilliant. There's some libraries um, that I won't get to, but 
like Kitronic, they sell a lot of um, boards. Some of their libraries, I, I wouldn't use because, you know, uh, is it this one? I think it's this one. They kind of make it too simple. You know, I want the students to learn that by turning the motor at 180 degrees, it's going to go left instead of using um, turn left. I'm like, nope, that's that's cheating, you know. <laughs> so have a look at some of your libraries uh, before you get the kids to install them. So what I did is I made them write the code to send electricity, you know, send this amount of power to servo one to get it to turn left 45 degrees. And they had to work out the different pin numbers um, that the the left motor was on. So I made them do all of that before I told them that's actually a library that can do this. And you know, I might think it's cruel, but it's you know, you it's learning. You do it the hard way first before you learn the shortcuts. Um, so have a look at some libraries. They might be making it too easy for your students before you install them. I think that was all my kind of my tips on um, thingy Bob make code. But I'd love to hear yours um, in the in the chat if you've got any for the last minute or five seconds. <laughs> Are we finished or we've got five minutes? Oh, there's no sense of time. We've got five minutes. Yes, you actually have five minutes. Yes. Ah, OK, so hopefully the chat will catch up with me and. You guys can tell me your tips because I'd love to hear them. Um, I'll just leave that on the screen. This is like my top making tips while I wait for you guys to answer. Thank you, Rachel, Megan, Terry. Oh, V2. No, I've got it here, Rachel, um, but I, I may have broken it. No, uh, just can't. I need to update the firmware um, to get it working, but I've not used it yet. I need to use it. Are on it soon. Um, but yeah, I need to use it. I need to look at the new blocks for it because they're going to be so exciting. Um, I know that my supervisor, oops, Joe Fiddy, is has been involved in like the the creation of V2, so it's been like taking over his life. Um, but it's not something that I've been directly involved in. But I really, yeah. I've got it here. It's kind of on my to-do pile. <laughs> but that's my uh, maker tips. Just in general, not necessarily kind of micro bit based. Um, you know, find a device. Obviously, my device has been micro bit. Um, find an accessory. So my accessory is NeoPixels, so lights. And then find a project. The cube is actually someone else's project. Uh, first, so I copied it by adapted it to make it mobile and then imagine a project, you know, something that no one's ever made and then make it with your device and your accessory. And I definitely recommend the last point, which is share, 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 which kind of brings me on to my last side of share with the foundation, you know, share with me, share with other makers of what you're up to. If you find a cool tip in make code, don't think that no one knows it, you know, don't think that you're the first person, you're not the first person to discover this. Share it because um, your your audience will appreciate any new knowledge you can give. Because um, I think the best bit about these events um, are that you meet other teachers, you know, and you you're, you meet another teacher in a similar school teaching the same age, teaching the same content, and they will have a thousand ideas that you, you don't have, and you will have a thousand ideas that they don't have. I said the same thing twice, but definitely share where you can, in whatever networks you are. <laughs> 